Hey everyone, so I, um, I'm gonna try to make this in 10 minutes, so I'm gonna talk really fast. So, today on Best Friend Confessionals, I'm going to be talking about rejection. And so I'm not talking about any uh, particular rejection that I'm going through at the moment, but things that I've been through uh, prior to becoming homeless, and then just all throughout my, uh, 36 young years of uh, being fabulous uh, and being rejected. Who would want to reject me? Come on. So, um, anywho, so, um, to start off with a rejection, I, um, I hope this is literally live. Okay, so I, <laughs> so to start off with rejection, um, a little about me is I am in school, or I was in school for psychology and human services, and I have probably like one class to get my certification in school age teaching, but I don't plan on becoming an actual school age teacher. What I plan on doing is, um, just gathering all of, um, the certificates so that I can like use that to help me get into another field uh, and stuff. So um, while I was studying, I, I had learned in education courses because uh, the teachers of, uh, I believe, of all of America, they are taught the uh, history of uh, teaching and the history of teaching children. So it's, it'll go back to all the way from philosophy, from the, uh, the uh, Socrates, all the way to modern day uh, history where um, you have, um, you know, like uh, Descartes or um, I think his name is um, Jung, Carl Jung, or um, um, you have um, all these fathers of psychology who, uh, Freud, blah, blah, but then I don't think they really use Freud in, uh, like, teaching because it's, he's kind of sick in the head. So, um, anyways, um, while I was learning I, uh, about, um, with, the, with rejection in mind, and when I was in school, I wasn't like, thinking, oh, I'm going to school for rejection, it all just kind of became like a revelation. Uh, so. I had learned that as a whole, in America, early in the um, 1900s, I don't know, 1901 or uh, 1902 or something like that, um, it had, um, America didn't really consider anybody who was of a young age or because the work age was so different um, to be very important in society, especially women and um, uh, LGBTQ people and, and children because um, basically you're just seen as uh, a worker in, in society. Sorry, hold on. Give me one second. So, you're basically just seen as a worker in society. So, um, just like all these like programs, they have their um, mission, and they have their their purpose and how they began, and it started with uh, sometimes a woman or a man saying, "Hey, I don't know if we should be doing that." And then they, you know, they went from you know, the, what was in their heart all the way to the uh, White House, and so then they started to create these laws to protect um, certain groups, and so particularly with rejection in mind, and having grown up being rejected, thinking about how. It, my entire life, I had felt rejected for being LGBTQ or being under that umbrella, and what, where in the world, how the things that I had learned in school, how that was going to help me cope with being rejected as an adult, because sometimes the things you do not, you do not um, deal with as an adult or a child, they kind of um, come into fruition as an adult, and you know, they have a real weird way of showing itself. Um, so. Um, I, I learned um, that in the 1950s and the 1970s, um, there weren't really any rights for children. Um, and then there are, um, so for, for particularly, there weren't any rights for other cultures as well. So growing up and then being in my field of work, I looked at, the, as an adult, the rejection. Not, not the rejection as a child, because if you stay in that mindset as a child, um, you're gonna never heal because you're gonna be coping with that rejection as a child would cope with that rejection. So as an adult, and thankfully I was able to like work in that field of like healing and service, I kind of was able to look at my younger self and be like, oh, this is how, this is how I'm gonna try to heal. Um, and so when I look at the, the, um, rejection that I faced, because actually one of like one of the first memories I remember is uh, um, 
my grandma's funeral where um, I didn't really have a place to sing in the choir and so I could remember I would go all uh, I'd go up there to you know to sing with the choir and everybody was like no no blah 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 and so I ended up having to sing on my own um, and so there's a lot of other incidents that you, uh, we all go through where we encounter not being wanted or being rejected and we hold on to that and how we cope with that and so as I got older and as an adult I started to look at society and then I started to look at history and I started to think, well, we're still growing as a whole world in the sense of uh, valuing individuals, whether it be LGBTQ people or different cultures or children, adults and elderly people. We're still learning to value people and um, people to um, be able to say this is what's best for them rather than just casting them away to the, to the dark. And so it's still the thought of growing up LGBTQ. LGBTQ um, or gay or trans, um, the thought of that um, growing up in a world where it's very structured, you have to be this or this or that, and if you don't fit into that, then you know you're gonna, you're not going to fit in anywhere at all. And so that's where the rejection comes in. As we grew grew and people started to speak their minds and started to go to places, then these bills started to be passed. And so when I look at that, I look at I as a rejection. I look at the world in a bigger sense, and then I look at my home life. And I can only speak for myself because in my home life, um, a lot of people are like, well. Was it because your dad was was your dad mean to you? My dad wasn't mean to me. Um, was it because your mom? Your mom wasn't mean to me. My mom wasn't mean to me. And there are some things that, as an adult and even as a child, that had happened that may, they may have said. But as an adult, I had to look at that as I'm like, shit, I make a lot of fucking mistakes too. But then, as as um, a child, I may have been like, I really didn't need to hear you say that. Like, uh, I didn't really want you to to think that. And so. Um, as, as my older self trying to pull myself out of that rejection, out of that um, rejection um, mindset where the emotions can pull me down and, uh, and being reminded of things uh, not being loved or not being wanted or, or never being invited anywhere or being told last about things. Um, because that's one of the things that I don't want to do is I want to be able to get on this to be able to have a, a frame of mind and a time frame to be able to say, hey, this is uh, what occurred and this is um, something that contributed to why it occurred in my belief. And so, I, I, you know, looking around a lot of times, being accepted and being loved and being wanted and finding um, your own space in this world, um, you can, you can ne sometimes you never find it. You'll, you'll, you're always so rejected. And so, um, from an educational standpoint, point, um, for myself here, um, I had to look at it as a world where we're still growing. And then even in for my own family, you know, they try their best. And then now it's time for me to grow and to try my best. And so, um, I, I don't know some of the things that I've heard, just even in the streets, um, you know, some of the things I, you know, um, what parents did and even just having worked in the field what parents did or even what children did and what happened with no parents and there are these kind of different parents and you see it in the news and people feel all different types of um, rejection um, I don't have an answer for that but I, I do know what worked best for me and um, education for me was a gift that my dad had given to me at a, a young age even though he wasn't here on this planet um, for that long um, but um, it was important for him, for him to instill in me at least the knowledge part because a, a big part of my, my dad's um, not getting along with his stepdad was that his real dad wasn't around. And so he didn't get along with his stepdad because him and his, uh, him, uh, he competed with the stepdad for his mother's affection. And so um, he would he would try to get his hustle on and take care of his mom and then um but he, so that's why our my last name is different um and legally it's because um you know and so then when he started having his own kids he ended up changing the name blah 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 so i don't know where i was going with that oh yeah so sometimes uh, education so sometimes um for my dad even though he never spoke about his stepdad and, and his mother i said my older siblings do know about him and um and then um, 
I know that for me, um, it's one of the things that my, my father at a young age probably even foresaw of me dealing with um, as a, a gay kid is that, you know, I know how the world is going to be and it's going to be difficult for this little boy to get into to the, to the regular world. And um, it wasn't and it wasn't. And so um, I have these frame of references in the past and thankfully I had good teachers and I think that's real key is who leads you and who teaches you because if they're teaching you and by the first day if you're not getting anything out of it the second and the third and fourth day and you look back and you're like what am I getting from this relationship then you better leave and you better find a better teacher and a better friend um, who's going to help you heal and grow in the process because the growing process should not be as painful as it is it should be uplifting and relieving you should feel better in the process it should it should also make you feel like you're strong enough to endure the process of going through difficult times but it also should make you feel like you're learning to be to see the bigger picture and to be stronger on the inside and not crumble on the uh, on the inside and so I had those frame of references for my parents because at a young age when I was rejected they would always say you're a leader you're not a follower so sometimes like at a young age even though I felt alone or was alone or am alone um, I knew inside that I wasn't broken um, from or I wasn't um, you know I wasn't um, I you know I knew how to accept myself because of the rejection so um, I didn't really want to um, I think for me if you can find different types of tools or tips to help you um, deal with your rejection and um, Ever, we all feel it, whether it's natural or whether it's um, just time is that you know, you have, uh, there was a relationship um, and it didn't have its, um, you know, it, did, it wasn't meant to be, um, or it was a, a loss um, and you had given your best and um, it, you know, you had no choice. And um, we all go through different types of losses and rejections, but um, I think for me, the biggest thing is, is to be able to. Um, educate yourself because that's really key from was key for me and then also being able to um be honest with myself because even though uh, some people think that um, you know let go of the emotion it's the emotion um for me personally um i was so used to like kind of like mm, brush it off but now i got into a point where i used to give myself like these 15 minute pity parties and i was like okay just sit here and just think about what's going on what are you doing how do you think about it and then move on and then you know as an adult i totally didn't even care about myself anymore where I didn't even ask myself if, you know how do I feel about it so I didn't know how to express it but now that I'm all uh, you know I went through these uh, traumatic recovery programs I, I'm able to to um, to see the pain and be able to sit in it and say okay this is how I feel about that and then or um, and then be able to um, respect myself because I think that's really big is if you can respect and love yourself um, and have that inside here you know everybody's going to do whatever they want that you know they're going to be able to do that and do whatever they want but if you if you lie down and let them walk all over you it's it's a free world or that we live in here and they'll, they'll gladly take that opportunity so don't do that um and if you can um read books as much as you can read books as much as you can um and um find good people that can pour into you even if it's just for a short time or you know just um you know a program a recovery program i really do um think recovery programs are really good and um you know however you go about um uh, handling your rejection um and then being able to know inside your heart that you're good enough that you matter and that um you're um you're you know you're important so um, it totally sounds like that movie from the from the help but it's so true it really is so true that um you're um you do matter and so um even in this state and time like like right now i kind of love it um uh, because as an adult people are like oh you're from um you know your family name you guys are have all these like uh, le legendary um accomplishments for the Polynesian community um, how do you cope with not being with them and not being uh, there when you're you know you're LGBTQ and you know is it because of that or what is that what else is it because of is it because of the drugs and stuff or um, I can I can sit in it and I can be like oh you know I can work towards that and there are there's a 12-step program to work towards that but um, I made the personal choice to um, 
to no longer want to um, pursue or to work for someone else's love. And that's just my own personal value is I don't think that love takes so much work. I think love should be unconditional and I don't think it should be abusive, but I also think that it shouldn't require, you know, someone to be at least in the communication part or at least in the uh, recognition part. Um, being able, not being seen or understood. So if I if I don't get that, Beyonce sings it in a song. She's like, you know, true love never hides. And so, um, you know, if you're hiding from me, um, then it's not really true love. So um, I probably went over my 10 minute mark. I really wanted to like squeeze in there. I didn't have like a, a structured way of how I was going to speak it, but I did want to get onto it because um, these are all um, um, points that I intend on using for like a bigger picture plan and it's just something for me personally that I want to express artistically um, in um, how I want to see some of my goals and so if you don't if, if it doesn't make sense to you now probably in the future it'll make a little more sense like oh this is why he was sitting on that bus bench talking about rejection talking about this shit is real and then um, you know hopefully in the next week or two I'll be talking about something different and then I hopefully want to gather all of that and then be able to talk about something uh, in a bigger sense and so um i love you all um if no, no one told you today um uh, you know, love yourself and uh, um have a great day and um i'll talk to you all soon bye